bunch welcome to the jungle gyms podcast that's right you knew what time it was already you're a fan of the show and hey if you're a first time watcher or listener thanks so much hey you know what normally i'm always asking you for my reviews on apple Podcasts and spotify and well i'd love you to do that too i actually want to ask you all a question how do you like your podcasts are you the type of person that solely likes the audio version because you want to listen to it in the car or are you somebody that likes the option of having maybe you can watch the video but you might just leave it in the background i want to know i'm trying to figure out where exactly to push my efforts i love doing the video version i think that we're a uh, very visual store and i would love for you all to be part of this adventure but at the same time i want to make sure i'm not leaving any of you out who are like mark i hate youtube never using it and uh, to that, I'll say, I'm sorry, YouTube's very informative. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. Well, this week, we've got a lot of fun stuff. As you can see right now, I'm hanging out in the meat department because we're doing our big meat episode as promised. We get to meet Scott, who's our main buyer and manager for the meat department. He's really instrumental in creating the department. And then coming up after that, we get to meet a pediatric oncologist who comes to the store with me to teach me all about some things that she approves to uh, share with your kids. Uh, but in the meantime, let's take a quick tour of the meat department, shall we? The Jungle Gyms meat department has all kinds of stuff. Here's some of our fresh cuts in the case here. We carry exotic meats from all over the world. All kinds of stuff. Meat you've never gotten to try. Things like ground kangaroo and ground goat. Maybe some ground yak, ground rabbit. There's even ground elk and more. We've got beef tripe. We've got chicken paws. We've got ground camel. I'm looking at some venison that's been ground as well as sirloin alligator meat. All kinds of stuff out here, things you've never tried, and we're the only place in town. Look, we've even got our own bacon, and one of my coolest and favorite things is that we only serve Amish chicken. And there's way, way more going on here, but let's have Scott tell you about it. I'm bringing in here, I'm bringing Scott, the king of the meat department. Uh, Scott, what is your actual title here? <laughs> uh, I'm the meat operations manager and senior buyer. Oh, cool. So talk to me a little bit about your background in meat. Like, how did you get into this line of work? Uh, I'm a third generation uh, meat cutter. Okay. Uh, learned from my grandfather and my father back in uh, California, where I'm originally from. Oh. Um, traveled to uh, and lived in South Africa for three years and ended up... Uh, here at Jungle Gyms back, uh, started in 95. Oh, wow. So you've been here a little while. Yeah. Too. Yeah. I assumed I can usually tell who's been here for a while because you guys get the cool vests. <laughs> that's what I was, for early on, yeah, I was yeah. like, I bet that I was like, that's like the five year and a beyond anniversary. Yeah. That's the OG vest. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Wow. South Africa. What was that like? By uh, the way? It was absolutely fantastic. Um, just great people uh, being in the the meat business mm -hmm. um, since I was 14. Uh, it's meat is, is a huge thing over there. They're um, very outdoorsy type people oh, cool. uh, grill a lot. Uh, you know, we call cookouts here, California, they call them barbecues there. They call them bries. And they uh, just cook everything. They have a, a staple sausage they call Bordevors. Okay. And I was I I actually brought that to Jungle Gyms, as well as their um, their jerky uh, and dried meat, which they call biltong. Okay. Um. So I've sourced that. We we sell that all here. Sell the the fresh Bordevors. We actually have a. Uh, a nice South African customer base that actually calls and asks for it. So it was fun to to incorporate some of those things that I found over there uh, into the jungle. I love that. Yeah. I, and I was going to ask you, since you've been and worked in so many other places, like how would you compare working at the jungle to some of the other experiences you've had? Uh, it's like been the the best uh, working experience I've ever had. The, the beauty of, of this place is that jungle lets you basically run your department like you own it he he's like very stand back he lets you you know use your imagination use your skills and just uh, go for it and and pretty much just do everything your yourself which the freedom is is awesome oh, so yeah. uh, and it's it's been a 
success. I love that. I I often now that I'm just a, I just have passed my first year here at the company right. now, uh, and I liken it a lot to I kind of feel like we are a mall. And that all of us are our own. Yeah, the way you put exactly. it, exactly. So well, right? It's like oh, our own so, little uh, businesses. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. It's a, a very interesting thing, and I think to me that's a big part of the success story of Jungle. Jones, oh, really. huge, huge you know? part of it. Yeah. yeah, you get passionate weirdos like us, it's, and we're like, I love this. It's let everybody just really get creative, use their uh, expertise and their passion uh, to sell product for the jungle. That's yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're doing it. It's a fun department. So I got to, I got to go down to like, this just the basic question to this point. Do you have a favorite cut of meat? And if so, what is it? Actually I do. Um, at the moment, the, my favorite cut of meat is a, uh, culotte muscle, which is also, uh, been popularized in Brazil and, uh, as picanha. Okay. And so we've, uh, it's, it's just, a, it's the top sirloin fat cap. Mm -hmm. It's just got tons of flavor with that fat, which, you know, I like, um, grilled, uh, it's sous vide, wh uh, whatever. It's, oh, okay. it's just fantastic. Sounds yeah. Like, well, the really where all the flavor comes from. Exactly. Too. It's, uh, it's something I think I was talking on one of my lead up teasers last week. I was kind of like. And well, maybe I'll just roll into this. I kept joking that the filet mignon seemed to be like the the original like favorite cut for a right. lot of people. But the more meat I've gotten into, the more I realize like, oh, while it is a nice tender cut of beef, it's great. It's not doesn't have the flavor exactly say something like you know. I mean, a ribeye, for example. Sure, you know, which I now is my go to. Well, cut. you know, you go you go out to a restaurant and ninety nine percent of the filet mignon that they serve has some kind of sauce on it. Sure. Red it's because flag. it doesn't have the flavor. I mean, it is. It's the most tender cut, but uh, flavor-wise, it's lacking. Wow. So yeah, no, it makes so much sense. And now I'm excited about the picanha. Like, does that? That's a specific cut itself, right? Like, it's it, the top sirloin okay. fat cap. We we sell them. We we sell choice Angus, prime grade, and Wagyu. The Wagyu is by far uh, my favorite. Oh yeah, they're fantastic, and we have. Just, you know, it's it's grown into, it's just like the, the tri-tips that I introduced to the jungle Thank you, from California. Yes. It's, uh, you know, a, a huge, you know, uh, uh, customer base th th that wants those. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and it's getting that same way with the uh, picanha. Yeah. In my in my old life, I was doing a lot of work out in California. I got very yeah. very friendly with the with tri tip. Oh, so you can yeah. imagine how it's disappointed very, I was. It's very easy to get friendly with the tri tip. It is, and it was so good. And I just came back, and I just remember being like, "Oh, this is almost yes. impossible to find here." And the first time I found exactly. it was right here. Right here. So yeah, thanks, Scott. Appreciate hey, it. No problem. You did me a great favor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now you mentioned Wagyu in there, and I know that we carry some different styles, like. You know, choice, prime, wagyu, things mm -hmm. of that nature. Um, what I was going to ask, though, is should I be concerned or should we all be concerned with the brand of meat that we get in, for example? Like certain, you know, is, am, am I asking that properly? Well, uh, it's it's a good question because we actually um, have a, a branded beef product that we sell, which mm -hmm. is Star Ranch Angus, okay. Choice Angus. We also have a branded uh, pork uh, that we carry, which is Indiana Packer, uh, tender and juicy. And uh, as far as USDA Prime, we have that. Mm -hmm. And then we carry uh, Sakura Farms Wagyu, which is an Ohio grown uh, Wagyu product. Cool. And it's nice. I used to deal with uh, a lot of uh, Australian Wagyu, which is good. Yeah. It's very, very, very excellent. But then I was introduced to the Sakura, and since it is Ohio based, and it's it's right here. And then they also have um, their own uh, way of grading their animals. They they have uh, what they call market grade, mm -hmm. which is the, the least amount of marbling. Then they have a classic grade, and then they have a signature. We carry nothing but classic and signature. So we're getting the cream of the crop on our Wagyu, and it's, it's excellent. Now, and I know they have like some of the A5 grades. Do we ever carry any of that? We have, A5, we have A5 available to us, but I don't carry it as a item that we put in on the case. It's really, really hard to sell 
two hundred dollar a pound steaks. Say, yeah, it was like the price. But I'm sure is a bit. We of we I I have access to it, and if customers uh, want it. Just give me a credit card number. I'll get a deposit, and I'll be happy to order it for you. I might be that first customer, and I'm telling all of you out there, if you, you got, we got to do it. Let's make it happen. We'll get small amounts in here. We'll there split it go. up on the podcast. It'll be great. So one of the things I think is cool about Jungle Gyms, especially as we see kind of the, I'll call it modernization of like other, you know, butcher departments and other grocery chains, for example. Right. Um, how should I say this? Um why are all the other stores prepackaged? And, it, you know, in my opinion, it, I would say that getting the fresh cuts from you all, mm -hmm. because you're cutting them in house, right? Oh, everything. Yeah. And so, does, would you say that some of the prepackaged stuff is of a lesser quality, or should we be aiming one way or another as a consumer, do you think? Uh, the pre, the pre-cut stuff, if it's choice grade or whatever, I mean, the, it, it's, you know, choice quality. Sure. The reason that, our competitors uh, are, are doing that is because trained, experienced meat cutters are uh, kind of like dinosaurs now. Sure. Okay. And we're blessed to have uh, a lot of years of knowledge working in both stores. We, we cut, we grind, we do everything in house. Uh, wow. And that's, uh, you know, especially during the holidays, it's a huge thing for us because we're the only, like we sell, you know, two to 300 cases of whole beef tenderloins every Christmas. And we get, you know, pre-orders on them or whatever, because we don't just take the whole tenderloin out of the, the box and, and put a sticker on it. We trim and clean up every individual tenderloin for the customer we take the the trim and the waste off that piece of meat we grind it that goes with with uh you know the finished product for the right. customer none of the competition does that we have the expertise the 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 knowledge uh, to do that for the customer and and that extra service that sets us apart from everybody I 100% agree that I think that's a beautiful take too and uh, it's been funny to me because I have watched this kind of happen, you know, once I got into the grocery game, as right. it were, I learned so much about everything, right? Uh, and it's been funny to see a lot of the the competition move away from this, and it's all prepackaged, which, you know, no, right. no shade or anything like that necessarily. But what's been funny is I'm assuming the customers in general are moving to places like us, and I'm seeing a lot of, like, little boutique butcher shops sure. becoming more of a common thing now. But yeah. it's kind of nice that we've got that in the store already. where i mean even though this place like you said it's it's huge it's like a, a big mall but right. we are like just a little corner butcher shop yeah all, all our uh it's all open air you know customers can look in they can hear you know the saws wailing away to hear us cutting meat grinding whatever it's it's all right there in front and it's fun on the on the weekends you know the the young families will come in and the kids will be standing in the cart and they're just they're just looking over, just like mesmerized by watching the guys back there cutting meat. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like, and it's an experience. It's one of those right. things that I always like to encourage people to come in for because yeah. you can see that, and not just in this department, but in so many of these departments. Right. You Plus, you know, when, when that's happening in real time, right there in front of you, it, it doesn't get any fresher than No, that. not at all. It's so, hard, to, hard to beat that. Exactly. Seriously. Well, I will say this. I've had somebody repeatedly reach out to me on TikTok. I think their name was Stefan. I hope I'm right. If not, well, you're welcome, Stefan. But they repeatedly wanted to th thank them. Department, I know it sounds silly, but they wanted to thank you all because a the freshness, and they kept mentioning that they thought that we always beat prices on pretty much everyone else in the greater. Cincinnati we did. Area, we awesome. we you know as as the main buyer for you know both stores, you know always and, and it's an advantage with just two locations that if I'm able to find some really hot deals, you know a uh, a big chain like Kroger or Meyer who has thousands of stores, they can't take advantage of that. But I can, because I've got two stores. I don't have to supply sure. thousands. So able to to really get some good deals and pass them on to the customers that way. Well, we all appreciate it. <laughs> I got to ask you about the exotic meats. Uh, yes. Uh, do you have anything uh, that you really like that you've tried that you'd push on? I know we talked about some of the South African it's, cuts. Earlier. I'm glad you brought that up because um, I introduced all the exotic meats to the jungle mm -hmm. back in 95. That was like one of my pet projects so cool. and um you know it's 
taken off. It, it, it's just amazing. We we really uh, focus on uh, a lot of our uh, grinds, the the ground, different you know game meats. Yeah. Uh, we we do have like some elk medallions, wild boar medallions, wild boar bacon, just crazy stuff like that. Yeah. And it's just grown and grown and grown and grown. And and it's funny when I first started bringing it in, I have a supplier out in California that I've been doing business with for almost 30 years. And I would just get, you know, small amounts because we're just starting out and I would have it aired out in a, in a, uh, EA containers, what they call them. I'd have a courier go pick it up at Delta, you know, and, I, and whatever. Now we sell so much and it's so popular. I've, I like truck everything out. We, sure. We're bringing in, you know, truck loads from two different suppliers out West and it's, it's just gone crazy. And I love, it's, it's awesome. I love walking through that section too, because yeah. I'm always like, what different thing am I going to try tonight? Yep. Wild boar is up on the list. You mentioned elk too, right. also really delicious. Uh, it's it's interesting to see, and it's funny how many things that I think some people might be a little afraid at first, but it's funny to me how familiar most of the tastes are. They, exactly, and it's it's really crazy. The, uh, the biggest day of sales in that category mm -hmm. is the day before Father's Day. Interesting. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Because they're like either... You know, the wife's buying a bunch to to let dad try it out sure. or they're just in there, whatever. But it, it's just it's crazy. So it's it's really it's really nice to see how that category's grown. So, so I love well. that. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned before that we are house grinding everything, too. Can you walk me through the grinding process? I have never ground my own meat and mm -hmm. I've always kind of wanted to. But I imagine that it requires actual skill and not just me buying a cut and shoving it into a grinder. Well, we we get um certified ground round and certified ground chuck that comes to us fresh in 10 pound tubes mm -hmm. okay and then you know you just open them and throw them in the grinder you know mix them up run it out we do generate shop trim from a, a small amount of shop trim that we do grind and sell that oh okay and then Customers, uh, we have a lot of customers who will call and they'll want like craft grind. It's like, can you, you know, I want a, a ribeye steak. I want a, a boneless short rib and I want a, you know, two pounds of brisket. And I, can you grind that all up for me and whatever. And, and, you know, that's the beauty of us. We can do that. Oh, wow. I, I had yes. no idea that was the thing. And we have, oh we have two, two separate grinders, beef, yeah. one beef, one pork for cross-contamination purposes in the health department. And so sure. we have we have a lot of Asian customers. They'll, you know, this, this one, she's like bi-weekly. She'll get like three fresh hams. We'll bone them out and grind them for because she does some kind of special recipe for her church. Oh, wow. So cool. it's just, you know, we're able to, to do that stuff. So it's nice. Yeah, like easy pivot. And honestly, I feel like I, I didn't know that was a thing. I'm secretly, secretly, this is never airing. I, this is just for my knowledge, Scott. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, now I'm like, oh, I can make right. interesting requests. Oh my gosh, I can't even imagine some of the blends we can make. Well, and the best grind, this is just my opinion, sure. that we sell is the Sakura Wagyu. Oh, yeah. It is absolutely um, you make a burger with that. It's it's crazy. It's probably how good ruin, it is. Yeah, I was gonna say it's gonna it ruin all so burgers. So good, it really is. <laughs> well, next time we'll get a grill going in here. We'll there you go. That. That'll be fun too. Um, you know, one thing, and I, I've occasionally touched on this like repeatedly throughout the show, but obviously with the pandemic and all that kind of stuff and prices going up and down, what kind of changes and things have you had to navigate in the last couple of years that maybe were different than the rest of your career? Basically uh, the supply chain issues that we had, we are very blessed, as I said before, that, that we're just two locations mm -hmm. because during the shutdown, when all our competitors shelves were empty, we were fully stocked. So we, we gain, and then, so that uh, got a lot of people that maybe hadn't been here before sure. to come in because they could actually buy stuff. And so we, we, and they liked it. And so we gained a lot of new customers that way. Yeah. But that was the biggest challenge um, being allocated on chicken orders, uh, on pork orders, just whatever. Right. Some of the uh, value added things that we get, like we do we do get case ready beef off all like uh, pre-cut and vacuum packed oxtails, oh, sure. hearts and tongues, that kind of thing. Couldn't get that 
product for like over a year. Oh, wow. They just weren't weren't doing it. Um, there's also another item that is a, is a huge seller for us, and that's a pork chitlin, which is like okay. the intestine sure. part of the intestine of, of the pig. Um, An interesting I, part. I source uh, a product that I've been dealing. It's it's called Aunt Bessie's, okay. and uh, they come. It comes from Denmark. They they're they're from Danish hogs, which are small. And the way they do it, they're they're like pre cleaned, all this kind of thing. And I book a truckload like every February. Yeah, we get them in during September, and there and that truckload is gone before Christmas. That's how popular. <laughs> They are. They come in a five-pound frozen bag, and we sell them that way. Well, the the major packers, the four that pretty much monopolize everything during the pandemic, they weren't even producing chitlins. Oh, no kidding. So we basically were the only show in town, and it was it was just insane. People, <laughs> the phone calls, they would get three to four hundred phone calls a day wow. about chitlins. We'd have customers coming from hundreds of miles away to buy them. It was absolutely incredible. I had got the last 90 cases out of cold storage right before Thanksgiving. We had like two pallets in front of the freezer bunker where we sell them and we're, yeah. we're loading them up. I took a video. It, it, was, it was like a riot. <laughs> and that 90 Black cases yeah. was gone in an hour and a half insane yes so but anyway supply chain that was the biggest challenge during the pandemic pricing obviously we had uh it's actually interesting because during during that time when they did the shutdown they shut down all the restaurants right so that shut down food service right which created what we call in the industry in in the beef the the pipeline of of beef products so the pipeline backed up. It enabled me to take advantage of some unbelievable deals uh, for the store sure. because they have to move the product. Right. So we actually, it worked kind of in our favor during the shutdown. That's awesome. What yeah, can yeah, I say? Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you got to find the positives in life every exactly. so often. I, exactly. I'm and you pass it on to the customers. <laughs> and we Thank do. You. I yeah. know. And they appreciated it. I wasn't employed here yet, so it was perfect right, for right. me. I came a few times. So it was great. <laughs> well, you know, I, that was about where I was originally going to cut it off, but you mentioned something. So now I'm going to ask this too. Is there, are there any seasonal items you know as we get into the holidays here are there any seasonal items or other things that are coming up that you might want to uh can maybe tease to the audience to get prepared on basically you know hams spiral hams is a big deal for us mm -hmm. we really only carry them during thanksgiving christmas and easter right uh lamb is a big seller for us year round but a uh, whole semi boneless lamb legs. We we really feature those during the Christmas holiday. They Perfect. do really well, and Easter as well. Um, turkeys, obviously, um, but that's that's pretty much as far as seasonal stuff goes. Right. Uh, along with the chitlins, pretty much we have everything year round except for for those certain items Perfect. for the holidays. That's great news. Yeah. Well, Scott, it's been great to get to know you here a little bit. Thanks for coming on. Great, Fine, great I talk it. to yeah. you, Mark. Seriously, looking forward to it. All right. Huh, they're still using my picture on here. That's crazy, isn't it? That's me on the bottles. That's so cool. Pear guava, great flavor. Well, uh, first off, Scott, thanks for joining us to tell us all about the meat department. But coming up next here, I'm joined by Dr. Karen, a pediatric oncologist, and she's gonna tell us all about her line of work because you never know who's coming into the jungle gyms. And then we're gonna go through the store and we're gonna have her approve certain products that we carry that uh, might be recommended for your kids too. Let's find out. All right, everyone, this is a fun one today. I get to meet all kinds of interesting people here. And you know what? I met them outside of my uh, my job, but I thought this would be a fun bit. And you never know who you're going to meet at the jungle. We carry health products, so this makes sense to me. I'd like to welcome to the studio, Dr. Karen. Hi. <laughs> is, that a, is that an okay title? I haven't been giving everybody's full names so oh, yeah, far. that's fine. Yeah, I yeah. thought we would do that. I just, in case we say anything terrible, I just thought we'd be safe. All right, Karen, tell me tell me what you do. Uh, I just finished my training for being a pediatric oncologist, which means that I take care of children with cancer. Oh, very nice. Very sweet. 
I've always, you know, what's funny is I've heard the word oncologist forever, but have no idea what that specifically meant. This is, that's what this show is all about. It's just us finding out how actually limited my vocabulary is. That's okay. And that's why I usually follow up pediatric oncologists with kid cancer doc. Kid cancer doc. Oh, nice. How, what, what made you want to get into this? It's kind of been a really long journey. Um, I started, I knew I wanted to be a, a doctor when I was six years old. Really? To, yeah. To be honest, it's because I watched Doogie Howser. Cool. So representation <laughs> works. I love it. Um, and <laughs> That's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like, I think I just really liked the whole idea of becoming a doctor. And then um, as I got older and went to my own pediatrician, I realized she was the exact model of a kind of pediatrician I didn't want to be become um, when I grew up. Um, and then like, kind of through college, I tried to figure out whether medicine was really right for me. And after, you know, a little bit of a circuitous route, circu circuitous route through. Um, um, it's a circuit. <laughs> Yeah, a circular route. <laughs> um, I uh, went, I was working in the lab for a while, and I realized I really miss working with people. When you say working in the lab, what do you mean by that? So I worked at a clinical microbiology lab. So every time you get a urine culture or a blood culture, somebody has to um, make a Petri dish out of it and see if anything grows. And so I was that person doing that. So handling well, your pee and poop out there. I'm really looking forward to us doing that today together on the show. Uh, <laughs> well, we were discussing about how the body is constantly just expelling liquids as a means of dealing with emotions. So yep. that's that's kind of perfect here. Um, yeah, I, I, I honestly didn't realize the lab thing. Well, you know, I guess for the audience to say, you and I really truly met, uh, not just through obviously your husband, but uh, as well through our mutual appreciation for food, which is kind of another reason. Obviously you've been in the store a bunch here visiting, so thank yes. you for that. Favorite, uh, favorite store in, in Cincinnati for sure. Maybe the world. Okay, well, I'll take it. Well, you know what, when we put the clip, well, I'll edit it so it just says favorite store in the world. What do you usually like to get here when you do come to Jungle Gyms? Oh, I go straight to the international section. Yeah. I mean, it usually takes me about four tries because I can never find it. I swear it's like Harry Potter and you just keep, <laughs> it just keeps moving. Yeah. But I usually. That's the secret to our success, actually. <laughs> you have to find the secret door. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I hit up the international section first just because it's such a a wonderful array of products. Well, first off, I'm glad that you came in in full attire in your white coat today. I love that already. You look very professional. Thank you. It's what I strive for. Yeah. So, and well, I mean, that's the way that you, it's, if it's your favorite store, I also would dress up that way. Well, that's why I wear crazy shit here all the time. Um, what are some of the, like, what's something you want people to know about your profession that, that people don't really know or understand besides everything? Uh, I mean, I think in general, um, pedi in pediatricians are actually one of the lowest paid physicians out there um, in, in this country. Um, and it's mostly because children are so healthy. Um, but really, health, in uh, health insurance companies are really not about keeping people healthy, unfortunately, in this country. Um, and so we do not get, get compensated that way. So the, the difference between like what I get paid versus what an orthopedic surgeon gets paid and honestly, we have the same length of training, which is six years, Yeah, um, is uh, probably a three to four times a different difference. That's crazy. And, you know, one of the things I kept thinking about as we were getting ready to meet about this is I, was, I just kept thinking, like, what are some of the big difference you would say versus like a, an adult GP, right? Or like, well, I guess in your case, obviously oncologist, but like, what would be the difference between like the adult version and what you're doing as a, you know, focusing on pediatrics? So actually, because pediatric cancer is so rare, um, and even though you may have heard certain cancers like leukemia, um, which is the most common kind of childhood cancer, yeah. um, old, uh, I would say adult oncologists usually concentrate on specific diseases. So they'll do breast cancer or they'll, or they'll do colon cancer because there are so many cases, um, just because there are more adults than there are children in this country. Oh, makes sense to me. Yeah. So I'm a little bit more generalized than than uh, most adult oncologists. So would you say? I mean, have you have you solely worked on the pediatrician side, or I mean, I'm assuming with your training, there's probably there's probably a bit of a general focus as well. Is that, am I wrong in saying that? So um, in medical school, you do adults and children, um, and women and children. So you kind of do all of the different fields so that okay. you have a sense of what you like. Yeah. Um, and then once I chose I wanted to do pediatrics, I did three years of general pediatrics training, which we, would mean after that training, I could be a pediatrician uh, that you take your child to in the office. Sure. 
Um, and then I did three more years of specialized training specifically to do pediatric hematology, which is blood diseases, oncology, cancer, and bone marrow transplant. So you went, and, you, and you're talking six whole years of all the training across the board. What does that training even look like? Like, what, what would I expect? I'm assuming, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh, is it like a lot of book courses? You know, what are we looking at? So this is really um, all almost, if you kind of think of it as an apprenticeship. Okay. This, I, I mean, originally, this is how all medical doctors learned. Um, you know, like in the 1700s or even before that. Yeah. Um, but he, that's the kind of doctor <laughs> I'd like to see. Someone from the 1700s, like, yeah, you're fine. Uh, d pray to a wizard about it. Yeah. Well, we still use leeches sometimes. <laughs> uh, but are you as, serious? <laughs> yes. Oh, really? Wait. Yeah. Okay. Let's not bury the lead. What for? Uh, actually, leeches do a really uh, good job of helping heal up and eat up kind of like um, gross wounds. Okay. And so um, sometimes it is still a pretty effective way to heal a wound. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And I'm sorry, I didn't want to really derail too far. So tell me back more about the training anyway. So in modern day training. Um, <laughs> it's all leech based training. Perfect. <laughs> After medical school, uh, you you go to a residency. So okay. that means that you are usually a, uh, you're in a hospital environment um, and depending on what your what field you want to spe specialize in you basically will um, work in a hospital so a lot of the younger doctors that you see will be residents who are learning their profession so it's kind of um, learning from books while you're still doing things on um, real people that's amazing all right, so me being like the normal weirdo, right? And I'm just interested in general and what you're doing. What are some of the strangest things you've run into in your line of work? Is that something I can ask? Oh, that is hard for me to think of off the top of my head. Yeah, because you led with the whole like, oh, I'm checking uh, urine cultures and things of that nature. I'm like, all right, well, that's got to be on the list of things I haven't had to do. So I just, you know, it's that thing where it's like from the patient side, we don't really get to see a lot of what you all do outside of coming in the office and go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh, okay, uh, here's a few tips, you know? Um, maybe that's a good way to frame it that instead of saying something strange, if you think of it, we can always come back to it, but... Um, yeah, like what What are some of the things that go on when you're not? Why are you always 15 minutes late to coming into the office? Why is my time not valued? Um, I think that's a personal problem, but <laughs> uh, but I think, um, I think people would be surprised by the level of teamwork that really happens behind the scenes. Yeah, what's that like? So, um, you know, obviously as the physician, um, I'm kind of the leader of the team, but really, um, I believe in the leadership model that everyone is important. All, all of their um, all of their thoughts and um, recommendations are also valid. So you know, like uh, the the it kind of depends because I'm in so many different kind of environments. So like I'm in the hospital and I'm also in the clinic, right. seeing patients, um, outpatient. And so in the outpatient clinic, you know, I very much rely on my nurses and nurse coordinators to help mm -hmm. me kind of carry out the plan that I've come up for with for for the uh, for the patient cool it's so interesting to me and this is going to be a weird swing but feel me on this for a second but it almost feels like there's so many commonalities in a lot of jobs that we never think about right and like to me i'm sitting here thinking like oh so you're the director and then the team is like the rest of the production crew as silly mm -hmm. as that sounds yeah like, no, totally. but to frame it like you're coming up you're like here's the plan here's how we're going to execute it you're this cog this is how you know how we put the uh, what what do they say i forget the expressions like how the cheese is made or mm -hmm. sorry everyone how the sausage is made. how the sausage is made i don't need a lot of sausage if you can believe that for somebody in my body um but i think that's really cool it's a really interesting thing i had no I, and i have no idea i you know i'm just a patient i if anything i'm the one that talks too much to their doctor and they're just like could you please like listen i part th of the problem. this is why i'm 15 <laughs> minutes late i'm i'm just doing my type five i'm just sitting here cracking jokes i'm like listen i know i'm your funniest patient um <laughs> that's amazing uh something karen i thought would be funny or fun maybe both it's the stem of the word um do you think maybe you'd be willing to come around the store with me for a minute maybe give me a few pediatrician approved items oh i would love to okay let's uh Throw our hands up and go for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dr. 
Karen. So, you know, Jungle Gyms, we're hanging out right now in our produce department. And for those of you, if you're watching the show, you probably know this, but, you know, we carry in all kinds of, it. we're over here in international produce. I'm hanging out with some dragon fruits um, and things of that nature. But, you know, obviously we, we want to encourage people to try all kinds of things here. So my question to you would be like, what are, do you have some thoughts on the, uh, the, the American kids diet? You know, I think that um, we don't give our kids enough credit. You know, all across the world, uh, cultures don't really cater to kids' tastes, what we think that they want. So, you know, I think our menus can, like at restaurants at home, um, can really expand past the chicken tenders and, and french fry hamburger palette. Um, you know, so I think what we should be doing is encouraging our children to be curious about food. We are already want them to be curious about other things. I um, mean, so Jungle Gyms is such an opportunity to be able to do that. You know, you can bring your kids here. Obviously, there's lots of things to entertain them along the way, but they, they can pick out an, an interesting fruit or an interesting vegetable, and then you can learn together about how to prepare that. Um, and I think it just really expands their culinary horizons, um, and I think that's, that's a good thing. All right, I'm thinking that's a, a pediatrician approved. Let me get one. Pediatrician approved. All right, Dr. Karen, I'll throw a little, uh, I don't know why I'm doing the Conan head wobble thing. Um, he's great, that's why. You know, we're over here in the bakery, you got a lot of fresh baked goods. And my question is, uh, I mean, sweets, kids love sweets. That's got to be pediatrician approved, right? You know, anything in moderation is okay. But I would say um, it's definitely not dentist approved. And also probably after a whole slice of cake like this, probably not parent approved either. <clears throat> okay, we're over here. I think we found some of the fun play sets. Uh, Karen, it's time. What, what did you find for us? All right, this right here, this Melissa and Doug's doctor's kit, approved like 100 percent it looks amazing it's got 25 pieces realistic doctor's instruments uh how I, i'd like you i mean i know you've already approved it but now i'm going to really make you dive in what are uh what are we what are we thinking on the instruments actually these are quite realistic uh here's a like a, a reflex ha there's a there's a yeah. there's a reflex hammer here there's an otoscope which is where you use to check the ears um, I don't know why there are scissors on this, what looks like a suture kit, but um, the placement might be a little bit off, but these are definitely real instruments that would actually really help children get prepared to go see a doctor. What is the, <laughs> what's, what's the menu card for? Oh, I'm guessing this is actually just to tell, uh, tell patient, patients and their parents who buy their food for them. What are the healthy foods, uh, kind of like food pyramid uh, kind of things. All right, so I see, you know, we got a lot of stuff here. Um, where are the leeches? You know, that's probably in a, a separate um, a separate box that you have to buy, mm. an additional set. Not a fan of DLC. So, Dr. Karen, you know, we're sitting here now with some of our multivitamins and supplements and things of that nature. I picked, I went with Trolls gummies. You got what, the Flintstones? The classic Flintstones. Yeah, exactly. And growing. That was, remember that commercial? No. no? That's our age gap. Cool. <laughs> well, now that I feel officially old. Uh, no, all kidding aside, Karen. So I wanted to ask, you know, we were talking about diet and health of children. What's your take on vitamins and all that stuff? You know, obviously vitamins and minerals are important, um, but I think for most children, as long as they eat a balanced, balanced diet, they should be able to get all the vitamins and minerals that they need from, from their meals. So with supplements, some children do need supplements, and I would say that if there are any supplements that you're planning on um, starting your child on, I would have a conversation with their healthcare professional first. Healthcare professional. So what do you say? Pediatrician approved? Uh, maybe. <clears throat> Dr. Karen, I appreciate your time. It's been great having you. And you know what, everyone? I know you're like, hey, Mark, this is the end of the episode, right? Well, not quite. So you'll remember I asked Dr. Karen a question she didn't quite have an answer for, but she's really cool and used the Jungle Gyms podcast hotline and called in to update us on the question I had. So let's find out what one of the most memorable experiences for Dr. Karen was, shall we? Here we go. Hey, Mark, it's Dr. Karen. Um, so ever since you asked me that question about the weirdest thing that I've ever experienced as a doctor, I've been trying to find a good story to tell. Um, and so it's kind of hard to have a story right off the top of my head, but I can't believe I forgot to talk about this one on the air. <laughs> so basically, um, again, I'm a pediatric oncologist, which means I take care of patients with cancer. And so I had a three-year-old who was just starting treatment for his leukemia. And in that first month of treatment, it's pretty intense. Um, and you often don't have, you basically wipe out your immune system. And so in this case, he was found to have some air in his intestines. 
And when that happens, the treatment is really um, to not have anything to eat or drink and wait for a general surgeon to clear you uh, for it to be safe for you to eat or drink again. And of course, during that time, he's in the hospital. We're giving him sugar-containing IV, flu- IV fluids to keep him hydrated um, and just uh, doing x-rays um, every, every couple of days to see if that air has gone away. Um, well, what we ended up finding out was that he kind of took matters into his own hands and uh, he was actually eating poop from his own diaper because I guess he was saying that he was ready to eat and that was the only thing that was available to him. So um, when his mom told us this, and again, this is like within meeting us two, like two weeks into meeting her, she was obviously just totally mortified, um, but I had to keep a straight face. Um, and honestly, it's just one of my favorite memories. Um, and so, yeah, that was a pretty weird moment in my life. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Well, thanks, Dr. Karen. And hey, all of you out there that are watching this, give me a call sometime. 513-674-6855. Hopefully you have a less gross story than Dr. Karen's, but I'd love to hear from you all. And again, I know I asked at the top of the episode, let me know how you like to lost, excuse me, let me know how you like to listen to your podcast. Are you an audio only person? Do you like that we've added video? Let's sound off in the comments. I know a bunch of you reached out in the uh, YouTube post I made last week just to sort of feel that out. So of course, thank you to all of you who are watching and are interacting there. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate all of you. Uh, And on that, I say that's a wrap for this week's show. So I'll see you out there in the aisles. The Jungle Gyms podcast is recorded in the WJJI studio inside Jungle Gyms International Market in Fairfield, Ohio. The Jungle Gyms podcast is produced and hosted by Mark Borison.